What's up? Today I have seven gimbal shots for you with the Gion Crane M3 and if you watched my review video a few weeks ago about this gimbal, you probably know that I did not really use gimbals before I shot everything handheld because bringing gimbals was always a bit too much to carry around but that has changed with this gimbal so I want to focus this video really on shots where I need to bring a gimbal for to make it worth it. So I would say let's get started. Okay, our first shot where we need a gimbal is if we want camera movement in different directions at the same time. So for example here I want to walk forward but at the same time I want to move the camera up. We'll do that later with Daniel but I want to show you now what I mean here exactly. Because if I would try to do that handheld that would be impossible to get a shot like that. So let's get everything set up here. And if you want to get a shot like that, it's good to have it in lock mode because then your gimbal doesn't go to the left or right. So as you could see, this is actually a really easy shot. You just have to walk forward and move the camera up but it would be really hard to get it without a gimbal. And the Crane M3 is great because you can always bring it, it's lightweight. And our next shot is the orbiting shot. So that's when you're walking around your subject. And we actually did this shot in the review video of the Crane M3 that Daniel walked around me and we had this nice transition via my back there. And I really like this shot because you get this parallax effect where your subject stays where it is, but the background moves fast around it. it. Looks pretty cool. And there are two ways to get this shot. The first one is a bit easier where your subject just stands still in the middle. And you can also do it while your subject the person is walking and both shots are great to show a lot of the surrounding part and to make this shot really nice it's always good to point the camera up a little bit like you can see now and film from the bottom that makes your character look bigger and instead of using that 17 millimeters that I had before you like super wide angle I use only 24 millimeters here but you can also zoom in even more when you want to get shots like that because that puts even more emphasis on your subject and it makes the background move even faster. And another really cool thing that you can do with gimbals is to shoot hyperlapses. But I don't mean the hyperlapses that you saw oftentimes in other videos where you shoot single photos. This is what I usually do for time lapses, for example, to get more quality. But here I want to shoot actual video while I'm getting my hyperlapse. And I actually shoot it now in 4K60. You can also choose 120 frames per second or so because you can also combine slow motion or speed ramping with hyperlapses. So here what I want to do is I will walk up the stairs to the way to the temple and then when the temple gets in the frame I want to speed ramp it to slow motion so that I have a nice emphasis on the temple there and I use the follow mode here so the camera really moves in every direction where I move the gimbal but it makes the movement smoother. It's actually good to film wide angle here because we have the stairs with the rails to the left and right and a super wide angle lens helps with that it emphasizes the motion. There I will also start a bit earlier now I want to have the nice dragons in the shot here too. Yeah, shot looks good. Probably have to add a little bit of post stabilization because even with the gimbal and all the stairs, sometimes you get a little bit of shake and then when you hyperlapse it up, it can cause some jitters. So also add stabilization there. That's good. I love shots like that. They definitely use 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second. So then you can combine this hyperlapse effect with speed ramping. Really love that. Okay, our next shot is actually not really a shot, it's more an enhancement of A-roll because just standing somewhere while you're talking into the camera or sitting somewhere is usually a bit boring and you can pep that up by using a gimbal and make one person walk back in front of you, which is actually what we did in the review video of the Giant Crane M3 as well. There Daniel walked backwards for like two minutes filming me. I know it was hard for him, but the shot came out really good. And to do that, I recommend to use a wireless transmission system for your audio like the Rode Wireless Go 2, what we're also using here right now. You can just put that on your camera while it's on the gimbal and then you get really good audio. And aside from that, I mean, it's pretty clear how to get a shot like that. You can get it now here, filming Daniel. And then I would just walk backwards and Daniel would talk in that case, but now he's not talking, he's actually filming me as well. <laughs> and that's how you get shots like that. Actually, this gimbal does a really good job there. So our next shot is also a shot that I would definitely not be able to do without a gimbal and that is if you want to have your camera really low to the ground while you're walking forward or backward or sidewards or whatever you want, it's up to you. So what I want to do now here with the temple is to have the camera really low to the ground and then make a push-in shot 
to the temple. And for that shot I actually use follow mode now, which doesn't really make it easy, but I want to pan the, or tilt the gimbal up a bit more at the end to show more of the temple. So for that I can only really do that in follow mode. Not sure how that came out, but I think especially at the beginning where you can still see the leaves and then it kind of reveals the temple a bit. It's pretty nice. So it's definitely a challenging shot here, but it's actually a bit easier if you don't necessarily want to film a big temple and you have to really tilt it up. If you want to get general low to the ground shots, like actually filming the ground, then it's even easier. And then there's also the super cool vortex mode, what you probably see in every Creative Gimbal Shots video. I must say, I can get some slight vortex shots straight out of my hand, like up to 180 degrees, stuff like that. But if I want to have more vortex, if I want to have 360 degrees or even more, then there's the limit really. So let's get one vortex shot or actually two vortex shots. And the nice thing about vortex shots with a gimbal is really that you only have to press the joystick to the left or right and the gimbal does the rest and you can freely move around as I'm doing right now. But let's also get a vortex shot up here. I think that looks pretty cool. So you don't only have to do vortex shots like straight, you can also do it vertical. So let's get one here. <laughs> Actually sitting. Yeah, that's definitely much better and easier as doing it handheld. <sighs> yeah, that's how you get vortex shots. I love that. It looks pretty dynamic. Nice. And our next shot is not so much about the shot itself, but more about the lens, because you can also use smaller telelenses on this gimbal. Not your 70 to 200, something like that. But here we're using the 85 mm f1.8 from Sony with the a7S 3 right now. And the nice thing about shots with telelenses on a gimbal is that you can create a lot of motion in the background, but also in the foreground with objects like those bushes here, which looks really nice. So I want to get a walking shot of Daniel now. And the only thing I will really do is to walk to the side and there it's important that you don't walk sideways like that but instead you walk in this direction and you have the gimbal in the other direction because that makes the shot a lot smoother you can obviously walk better like that than sideways so that's important to remember there but aside from that it's an easy shot i just try to keep his head in the center of the frame all the time while walking in one direction and having some bushes in the foreground and important when getting shots like that here especially with foreground objects is to use manual focus because that allows me to focus on his face so that the autofocus would not try to focus on the bushes here before so let's do that three two one go And there we got the shot. I also shot it in 120p because the slow motion effect really emphasizes that. Okay, we didn't shoot any sequences here. So today it was really just some shots that you can use for your travel videos with the Crane M3 and other gimbals, of course. And if you haven't done yet, definitely check out my review of this gimbal. I will leave that here in the corner. And also, if you want to know how to get good handheld shots for your travel videos, check out my other video here. And I hope to see you in the next one.